Hello everyone. Today we are going to speak about loops and recursive function. So first of all, let's uh, do a definition of loop and why we need this. So let's uh, start with a square and let's uh, consider that we want to have a square and a rotated square inside it. So I'm going to bring this curve as a set point curve inside my grasshopper and I'm going to rotate it. based on uh, its uh, center. So I'm going to use a polygon center instead of uh, using area. You can also use that. And uh, I'm going to define a number as uh, the rotation degree. So I'm going to click on degrees and connect this uh, slider to it. So by changing this, I can have a rotated square uh, for this uh, first square that I had. Now I want to also scale it so that it can be inside the initial square. So I'm going to use a scale component and uh, I can hide this part. I can use the same center and for factor I'm going to work with something like um, point, uh, 0 0.87 and I can also change it. So now this is something that seems to work for me and uh, this, is the, this is the second square that uh, I wanted to have as the rotated and escaped square of this initial one. Now, if I want to repeat this process for this square, I need to copy this part. So I'm going, going to uh, make this part a group and I'm going to copy it and connect whatever was connected to that curve to another uh, curve, which is the output of uh, this scale. So here, and here and as you see this is the second square that uh, I had now if I also want to, uh, to repeat this process for this uh, second for this third square I need to again copy this part so instead of doing this I can use a loop and we are going to work with anemone which is a comp which is a plugin for grasshopper and it's also working for loops in, it has uh, two parts, fast and classic. We are going to work with classic part. And it has loop start and loop end. Now I want to show you how you should uh, organize your components for working with the animal loop. Uh, first, you should connect these two parts together so that this shows a complete loop from start and end. Now we have some parts in here. The do is uh, the uh, object you are going to work with, which is in here, a curve. So I'm going to use a curve component and connect it to the do and also copy it for this uh, do output of the start component and also copy it for the output. So let's disconnect it from this part, but I want to show you that the component type for all of these parts should be the same. So if you are, you are using with a curve, you should use a curve component in all these parts. If it's a surface or a B-Rev, they all should be the same. And now we have uh, two parts in here, the repeat, which shows which stage are you in. So let's start with zero, but we want to go with 12 steps. And the trigger here, you should use a button so that you can just uh, reset the code or the loop and uh, now what I want to have inside this part is uh, just the same as what we had in here so I'm going to just copy this group part and bring it inside here and also let's uh, hide this part and also hide it inside our Rhino now if I connect this part this uh, 
and let's use the same curve so I'm going to use this curve and bring it to here and now if I connect the output of uh, this do to these parts of my code my group code that I have in here which is for making this uh, square inside this square and connect the output to this uh, output of the curve which goes to the end loop I can have the result and if I uh, just change the repeat iteration step I can have different parts but uh, if I want to have all of them and see them together I can click on this uh, end loop component and put it on record data so now if I increase this number sorry again let's do this so now if I increase this number as you see we can have all these squares that are made together so this is what we can have using a loop and as you see there are no uh, complicated um, functions in here and there is no repetitions if you wanted to have this again in this part without using a loop we had to use all these uh, group parts uh, after each other and it made a lot of uh, works in here which we do not really need because we can just use a loop component now let's see what other applications it can have another important thing that you can have is uh, creating a tree so let's work with that we can uh, for uh, making a tree we can start with a curve I'm drawing it inside my Rhino so this is the curve that I want to have and as you see it's not completely vertical and that's what I want to show you and also I can make it more visible so like this and I'm going to bring it inside my Rhino and uh, now I want to have uh, two uh, branches inside this part uh, which is the end of my curve so first of all I'm going to find the endpoints using this component and uh, I'm going to move my curve uh, to this uh, point which is the end point so I'm going to use a move component and uh, I'm going to use a vector and what is the my vector my vector is a vector that uh, connects this point which is the start point to the end point so I'm going to use a vector to point and make a vector between these two points and connect it to the output so this is uh, what uh, one curve that uh, is uh, that is the same curve that I had in here but it's moved just uh, with the length of the first curve so this is the vector between these two points and now I want to scale this curve the second curve because I want it to be smaller than what uh, I had before and I'm going to put the center point on this uh, end point because I want it to be a scale from this point and um, the scale factor let's put it on 0 0.7 okay now I have uh, this point in this curve in here and uh, I want to rotate it and have uh, two of them so I'm going to use a rotate and the center uh, plane uh, will be this end point again and the angle uh, I want to use two uh, values so I'm going to use a panel and put it on minus 20 and 20 so that I can have two results uh, click on multiply data and add it okay so now this is the result that I have and now I want to repeat this for each of these curves 
so um, now I'm going to put it in a loop so let's just copy these parts and bring them in here and connect the let's put it on zero and uh, connect these parts uh, yeah and this should be this first curve that we had in here okay and let's also unhide this so let's see what we will uh, have as a result what you see is uh, that it just uses one of these curves and shows the output of that and the reason is that as we, sh uh, we i spoke about it the type in this part should be the same and another point is that the number of data that you have in this component should also be the same so because we have started with one curve when we use this um, code and it gives us two curves uh, it doesn't work for the loop so this is also another point that you should really consider and uh, work with um, in your definitions so for solving this problem it just needs a graph when you graph this output uh, this will become in two separate uh, branches and the problem will be solved so now if I uh, put it on zero and reset the bottom now you can see that it works properly So this is the final tree that we created using this loop.